Thanks for coming to my talk. Uh, I'll just briefly and quickly go through some of my research, which is short talk about uh, harvesting voice conference bridges. Uh, you might ask uh, what's all about. So basically, you, you might have used it at least once where you dial into a bridge and you have like a big conference call with developers, product management, uh, so on and so on. It's used uh, on a daily basis from university to enterprise and so on. Uh, companies commonly use specialized uh, service providers. Basically, if they have like uh, this thing outsource where they buy basically dial in numbers and you dial, they provide you passwords and basically the company uh, employees can use this for like uh, streamlining their operations. Or sometimes they just deploy a smaller one if uh, Asterix, VoIP IP based PBX inside the company and they manage themselves like uh, open source or not open source but managed in house. Uh, anyway, both of these have like uh, both internal and external access numbers. So basically, employees on the road can dial in from anywhere in the world to have a conference call to make the business running. So how this research started? Uh, basically, I I usually like massive and large scale data collection. I was working in a company with 20,000 employees, and uh, you know there's like a lot of data in their uh, Outlook and uh, <laughs> Exchange servers. You know how it goes. Um, now, uh, why uh, these phone numbers? I mean, a lot of research done on collecting uh, private information or data like uh, email addresses, but this is one thing. Uh, the thing with the voice um, conference calls is that they're not perceived as a risk. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, the companies and the people do not perceive it as a risk when a person uh, taps into a call and basically records intelligence out of the call. If you remember the case anti-sec rules against FBI, basically it was exactly this case. Even the guys in FBI were not aware that somebody is tapping there. So basically leaking intelligence without even knowing. And the worst thing is like, you know, it's a telephone uh, system. It's uh, pin based and usually it's like four digits. Uh, okay, now we have eight or so on, but anyway. <coughs> So it's uh, very limited security features, and they is not so common to have a lockout because users uh, put their pins in hurry. Sometimes they just mistake, and it's a trouble if they, their account or conference call gets blocked. So usually they are not blocking out uh, incorrect pins. So brute, for brute forcing is uh, a very viable option. <coughs> okay, so. Uh, the other uh, thing is that it's a, it's a hard task to do and usually you need, uh, um, basically voice is one thing, but to, to, to automate everything you need the um, reliable and transcript from voice to text and then have some actionable uh, intelligence on this text, uh, which you can do <coughs> if uh, by um, having APIs like Alchem API, OpenCalize, and Manta Coveo, I, I'm sure guys you use some of these. Or you can use Google Mail or some open APIs, which is more or less free. Also, you need reliable voice transcript extraction, which you can do with Google Voice or uh, Siri kind of stuff, or you can use more <coughs> professional ones. Okay, <coughs> uh, sorry. <coughs> so uh, conference rooms uh, are uh, very tightly linked to this topic because usually you have uh, those conference rooms in uh, Outlook and Exchange which has a lot of information and usually people share uh, documents which are to be discussed in, in the conference call and usually they put their passwords and uh, the phone numbers in those details. And guess what? Because it's conference rooms, usually it's a shared resource. It's not password protected so that anybody in the company can join the conference. And uh, if you have like a company worldwide with 500 conference rooms worldwide, just automate how you do this. <coughs> For example, this is the interface usually. For example, you have like library, you have very well structured data more or less, and you have all the details like if you click on one of these, you'll have details with bridge and pin codes and so on. So going manually is hard. <coughs> just take Outlook VBA automation, just go through all the exchange, and you get like 300 megabytes of file with all the historical records of all the rooms, and basically you see also the, how the pin numbers evoluted from uh, these voice conferences and so on. <coughs> so this is uh, internal part, basically from enterprise level, where you have to be like an insider. 
okay, you can go through various threads into the company, but sometimes these details just leak on the internet because people are not aware this is a security concern. So guess what? You have Google Dorks, and this is a small list, but the list is kind of bigger in reality. So this is just an example. <coughs> so if you type this kind of thing in Google, you see like passcodes, you attend the access code, you have like the dial-in numbers and <coughs> so on and so on. And it gives like millions of records. <coughs> so one thing you can learn PIN uh, policies or password policies, you can learn the numbers, <coughs> you can dial in and just wait and then record the wave. Uh, file and also you can do some other intelligence gathering. <laughs> so just in a nutshell, I'm not sure how I'm doing uh, with time. Two minutes. Right? Two minutes. Okay, cool. So uh, harvesting is like the first step is find conference detail, as I explained, like have Insider or Outlook have, uh, VBA script kind of things, Google Docs, or just uh, have those kind of leaked emails like FBI anti uh, anti sec case. <laughs> Then you just take all that big, big data set, just run it through Gmail, <coughs> and then, or I mean, if you, you're, you're not able to, to, to afford the API or don't want to write a script, you just uh, throw it in Gmail, then you can automate a call-in and call-out indication using Skype or any other uh, VoIP-based client, which is programmable via Python or, or whatever your flavor is. <coughs> and then the last step is a little bit harder, it's like more artificial intelligence, and I mean, the goal is not yet to be here, but at least to be here to record everything. <laughs> and you have some uh, tools and frameworks. Okay, uh, this is a real life example. That's the original mail which got leaked or got somehow sniffed. Uh, if we run it through Gmail, you see that Gmail actually automatically detects the number. Where you click, it opens up the just call it. So they have this kind of tools already built in. And <coughs> they also detect the date. They pop up to you, add to calendar. So basically, they have all this kind of intelligence. You can use this, but I mean, this is in Gmail. You want uh, more control. <coughs> so basically, you use Python lib phone numbers and Python data till. You integrate with Skype VoIP scripting. So you can see that from this text, <coughs> basically, we extract the phone numbers and uh, the date. Okay, and uh, January 17th. So we basically gather in a script, automated manner, all the intelligence know when to connect, to which number to connect, which pin to dial, and uh, so on. <laughs> so just periodically audit and validate uh, the shared calendars. Uh, watch out uh, what data you, your employee published to the internet because uh, voice conferencing is uh, sensitive, and thank you.